Different studies provide different kind of evidence. In this video, I will explain what is strong evidence and what is weak evidence. For example, if you go and interview one manager in one case, your data is a lot weaker than if you follow 10 cases over three years and interview 30 people from each case. So how do we judge what is the quantity and what is the evidence value of our data and what kind of different studies can we do? The first question is, why don't we just ask successful people? If we want to understand, for example, what makes a person a successful entrepreneur or a successful business executive or successful innovator, why just ask Elon Musk, he's the, uh, the richest person in the world and uh, he has started many very successful companies. The, there are a few problems about this approach. One is that there's this thing called fundamental attribution error, which means that when we ask people to evaluate themselves, they tend to evaluate, they tend to attribute positive outcomes to what they did and negative outcomes to circumstances. So we are not fair judges of ourselves. For this reason, we, it's better actually to have someone external evaluate, for example, what Elon Musk did to be successful than to ask himself. And this comes, brings us to the different forms of evidence. This is the, um, what we call the evidence pyramid. It has been criticized that it's actually more of a list than a pyramid, but we have a pyramid, so we'll talk about the pyramid. And it comes from medical research, so not all of these terms are directly translatable to business research, but the general idea is. So the weakest form of evidence is expert opinions, um, newspaper editorials, whatever someone tells that their opinion is. Experts' opinions are valuable, but typically if you ask a single expert, then uh, the evidence value of that answer is not as high as a systematic study because of the attribution error that I explained. The second is that if we have like a case study that explains what happened and why, and uh, but doesn't really go very deep into the case. So the difference between asking an expert and doing a case study is that typically the person who does the case study is not a part of a case. So if we want to understand why Elon Musk is successful, there might be an external person who evaluates what he did and then tries to, to judge whether his actions actually made a difference to the outcome. Then we have um, case reports. We think for some reason that numerical cases are have higher value than just narrative cases. To some extent, new numbers are more trustworthy than just narrative descriptions of what happens. Then we have a case series. So the case series it means that we have uh, basically multiple cases that we study. They might not have uh, be exactly similar, but if we have more than one case where something happens, then the evidentiary value of that case series is more than just a single case. Then we have a uh, cross-sectional survey. So the idea of a survey is that you try to take a broad sample of companies or people and then you study those. The difference between a case series and cross-sectional survey is that the case series is number of a uh, smaller number of cases, maybe four, five, ten, and surveys typically are tens or hundreds of people or companies. So we have a larger sample size in a survey, we can study the phenomenon in a broader setting. So generally a well-done survey, it has higher evidentiary value than a single case. I'll talk about more in, in details the advantages of case study versus survey later on in a different video. Then we have uh, case control studies. And this idea is that instead of doing um, following multiple cases, we choose a case that did something and we choose a case that did not do something. So we try to have kind of like an experimental situation where we observe the treatment and control in a natural setting. Even better would be a, a cohort study where we study like the sample of all the companies, for example, in the Finnish stock ex exchange over time. So this is a longitudinal study where we try to study all companies in a certain group or at least a representative sample of companies in a certain group and over time. So cross-sectional is a single time point, then these uh, cohort studies and longitudinal studies are following many companies over longer periods, not just one snapshot. 
Then we have uh, randomized controlled trials. And the idea of a trial is that you have an idea. Let's say we have an idea that certain innovation practices work better than other practices or certain uh, pay for performance programs work better than normal employee compensation like just fixed salary. We randomize our participants into two groups. One does what they do usually and another one and the other group is the treatment group and they apply the protocol that we prescribe and then we follow what is the outcome. These are not very, very common in business research if we study companies, but if we study people, then organizational behavior, there are lots of experiments. And the idea of a trial is that you experiment with something in the field. And then finally, we have systematic reviews. The idea of a systematic review or a meta-analysis is that instead of doing a single study yourself, you collect systematically all evidence for every study done this far. So if we have, let's say, 100 studies done on a topic, then we collect evidence from those 100 studies and then we make an aggregate conclusion. So we can vary, we can go from uh, exper uh, 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 expert opinions about the single case to more uh, rigorous study of a single case to multiple studies to multiple studies, uh, cross sectionally, surveys over time, trials, and then aggregating existing research evidence. When we go up higher in the pyramid, the more stronger our evidence is.